thoughts of the round table with Matt Rebar and Paul Laux. And it's been a minute. We're kind of getting sporadic lately, but that's just the summer. We'll get better. I mean, to be consistent in this economy. (laughs) (laughs) That's the name of the episode, I think, already. I had a... A, a group uh, group text with a couple of my buddies, mm-hmm. and last night at eleven thirty, someone like started talking about the economy, and it went to like one in the morning. Wow, my wife was not happy. Your wife was like, "Please turn off that bright blue light and let <laughs> me sleep." But anyways, we are back. I know it's been a while. We're kind of, it's yeah. been a, better than nothing, I guess, right? Well, you know what happens is, you know, we we used to have a consistent day, and then this summer, like half the time that we would record on that day, we just things happened. It's life. It's just. I do have a feeling. It's. I feel like it's easier to record in winter, for some reason. Because there's nothing. What else are you gonna do? There's nothing else to do, (laughs) in Ohio. Well, what else? There's things to do. It's just like, do you want to go out in the winter and do them? That's true. It's It's just like, would you rather down the street? You know. It's like, would you rather you know go out and freeze your ass off or record a podcast inside? (laughs) It's like, would you rather be consistent during the summer or consistent during the winter? And it's like, well, the winter. I know I something we, we've talked about too, which we, I think we can tease a little bit, is guests. We're trying to figure out what yes, we wanted. We, There's a new angle, I think, that we want to take mm-hmm. with this. But We've been talking some ideas. It's just the last two months, this podcast has been like more on more of a fiesta than like when actually people in Spain take a fiesta. You mean a siesta? A siesta, thank you. A fiesta is a party. (laughs) Well, the party's been on a break. (laughs) I only know that because of Walmart's fiesta blend cheese. If we were a party, we'd literally be the part of the party. Like, this summer, we'd be the part of the party where, like, the cops came and everyone's, like, quiet and just standing. Right, right. Don't move. The cops are here. Which, by the way, I do have some people who've agreed to come on the show. Oh, my gosh. So, really, it's just about scheduling dates. And, you know, I think we've been talking about doing, like, a live venue experience just for funsies. Yeah, that's been... So, that's been on the bucket list. We talked about that. But that's too. probably harder to set up than we think. I think it's just kind of going to like places that like you know, like hey yeah Mondays at four p.m. That'd be great. What do Come you think? On in the bar. What do you think? Like uh, like Starbucks or somebody? We just showed up with this stuff. I feel How like, quick do you think we get kicked out? I feel like Starbucks. Like the first five minutes would be like, um, what are they doing? And then like. We'd you have a MacBook, so I mean, no one would really say anything. It's the microphone. The microphone. And you also have a man bun. I do. I mean, I look the part. I'm actually a huge Starbucks reward member. Like, I, I get a lot of Starbucks. I don't like Starbucks all that much. Well, not the coffee. I like the lattes and the teas. No, oh, okay. You're like my wife, then. Yes. Me and Katie get some tea later. <laughs> all right, so I heard you did have some news. You said just before we went on. What oh, yeah. That? So, since we haven't talked about this on the podcast, and I think you'd love to talk about it, I bought a new car. Now, I know this is kind of like a mundane topic, but for us, nothing is ever mundane. And the, mm. I want to say this because when you first started coming over to report, report, record these podcasts, mm. one of the first things I noticed about your first car is it had no front bumper. Yeah, it was missing a gonna... bumper. The windshield fluid was cracked. The uh, There was like some dents. The back uh, window was out. The left mirror was broken. Um, it leaked oil on my the driveway. The transmission was leaky. And, but here's what did it. You want to know it? Oh, there was no AC. There was no heat. There was no radio. Uh, no no what speakers. What did it? So, you know I work downtown and that I meter with quarters, right? So, yeah. we go, so I park the car. At least no one's going to smash and grab that car. from 8 to 10. Wait, hold on now. From 8 to 10, you know, you put some quarters in. So, you put $2 worth of quarters, 8 to 10, and then I'm usually out by 10. So, it's That's great. That's the worst, worst thing ever. I accidentally left a roll of quarters, like, visible. Among You're, all my recycling no, no. and clothes, someone smashed my left, like the passenger window. For a took, roll of for, quarters? And, here's where it gets worse, and the case, I, I had a great little case for my quarters. It was like a cute little metal case. Like a clutch? You had a little clutch? Like a, <laughs> like a clutch bag for quarters. Yeah, they took that. And here's, Paul, here's the best part. Why would they break a window for quarters? Because they wanted money. It's money, dude. It's like 10 bucks max. Yeah, but... Shoot, man. People are desperate. Well, they, uh, they, the police don't actually do anything about well, those. Well, I call the police. Here's the best part. The police call. They're like, oh, what do you do for work? And it turns out they, they're like, oh, I you know, love what you do for work or whatever. And now, were you like, mostly mad about like, and obviously you're not, I'm, su- I'm assuming you're not too bummed about the quarters. Like, I gave them three rolls of quarters to not break my window. I was going to say, it's the window. It's like, yeah. god damn it. Now I got to, you know. 
Paper so, this window. You know, they'd write up the report, and apparently, here's the best, Paul. They're like, well, there's been a string of car robberies. And I'm like, that's why we need cameras downtown. Like, we need, like, hello. It's surprisingly it's barren camera wise in downtown yeah. Cleveland. There's it really nothing. Is. There's nothing. And, like, I don't know. I, I'm, the, I, the I don't want to advocate for Big Brother, but, like, it'd be nice to have, like, yeah. okay, major intersections. Or I don't, Big Brother. Come on, who cares if we have cameras pointing towards the club? That, it's all, all that's going to do is help people. Yeah. So, what do you think? So, get? anyway. That's why I had to get a new car. But to be fair, you know, with like I didn't have heat last winter, and m- remember those negative thirty days that we had here in Cleveland? You drove around like that? Oh, it was terrible, Paul. Like I, one hand's on the wheel, one hand is like chunking ice off the windshield, making sure I didn't die. Why didn't you chunk the ice off first? Before because it kept refreezing because it was negative thirty degrees. <laughs> <laughs> like, not, like literally, it was like. Oh, and you didn't have windshield I carry, heat, right? Dude, I carry underwooded a few times, and for those who don't know. You, what, Oh, Jesus underwooded. Take the Wheel? Yeah. That, I call that a carry Underwooded is when mm-hmm. Jesus Take the Wheel because holy crap. No, wait a minute. You didn't even have windshield heat? I had no heat. Oh my. Or that is AC. the most dangerous thing I've I ever do. heard the in my car life. was. Well, are you ready for this? You're going to love this. We should have signed up is... for Uber with that and see what they would have done. <laughs> Uber would have been like, you can Uber yourself back home. <laughs> it's like, that car it's like they buy car. you a car. It's like, we're worried about you. Like, please, just Hi, take this. It's, it's Michelle from Uber. We're kind of worried <laughs> that your car is like going to kill you. So you're going to love this story. So when I bought the car, it didn't have any of those problems, right? You know. It, the, it, the car you old? The old my car? old car. Okay, yeah. okay. Broke Did it. it have a bumper when you bought it? Yeah. It just, the, what happened, it was like a rust thing. It like unrusted the nails. Uh, it, anyway. Unrusted the nails? <laughs> the nails were unrusted. <laughs> so technical. <laughs> um, so I bought it for 3K. For, just what year was it? 2009. Now we're going to like auto trade. I know, you're like, well, here we are. So... I was looking at new cars, and I get to the Mitsubishi place, and they were having a deal, like, that week, and they were like, you bring in any car, and we'll put 4K off a brand new car. Really? Yeah. Even so I rolled thing? in with my... You're really testing No window, that. no AC, no heat, no, like, bumpers falling no off. No window. No window. I mean, it, You're really jumped. testing it the flight with this Literally, one. I walked in with metal on wheels. Like, you know what I mean? Got 4K off a brand new car. Are you serious? Yeah. Knocked so, it right. It knocked it from. So what'd you end up 12. paying? Well, it, the car is sixteen, but it knocked it down to twelve. Then I put like you know, obviously tax added up, and then I put like like a nice chunk down, and uh, I put on like two payments already, and I've like put on like big two payments. You know, I'm trying to like knock it down. What uh, what car is it? Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi Mirage. Nice. And it's small. It's perfect for all that. Let me look at the window. Is it parked in my driveway? Oh yeah, go look at it. Oh no, it's on the street. Oh, it's on the street. I'll look at it later. But um. The only thing is, my, you know, I love recycling. We don't recycle at work. So I, I keep all my recycling in the car. And I need to stop. Like, I need to get a better habit of doing that. Cause and just trashing your car? Yeah. It's 4,000 like miles deep and it's like trashed. <laughs> um, but no, it's great. And the mileage is great. Seven gallons. It holds seven gallons. Which That's is, a small ass tank. But 300 miles on seven gallons. Damn. Right? I've never seen, heard of a seven gallon tank. Yeah, dude, when I what filled it hell, up man? and it like clicked off at seven, I was like, is this on, like, is this malfunctioning? And then I start the car and it's like full tank. I'm like, wow. That is, that is a tiny I could go tank. to Columbus and maybe back on a full tank. Maybe back. <laughs> Mine's on test. I don't know. How many miles is it? To Columbus? I just know it's, it's by like 100. 100 some. Yeah. Oh, easy. <clears throat> yeah. Easy. On one tank for my car. So no, I like it a lot. Um, it's nice to actually have because before getting this brand new car, I had three used, and I rode them all into the ash. And so it's nice well, that go. this car should probably. Did they hold say me. anything at all when you rolled up with the, you know the one guy? The oh, yeah, the the salesman was like, "Yeah, you're you are taking advantage of a good deal." <laughs> and, you know, like kudos because I bought that car for three k. I made a k. I made a thousand back. If you think right. about it. And there was no way like. I wouldn't even get four dollars for that car. No, let alone four thousand. That's a one hell of a deal. Four thousand. I know. Oh I was so. I felt so. Hashtag adult. Oh, sweetie, Colby. But uh, I'm actually looking to get a new car too. Oh really? Looking at an SUV. Oh. I've always wanted. They're they're all responsible with your SUV. They're pricey. You know what the funny thing is is. Um, the reason we want to get an SUV, not for, you know, extended family or anything. Yeah. Literally because I'm sick of borrowing people's SUVs and trucks to take stuff home from the Home Depot. That makes sense, too. It sucks, get man. In little tiny cars. Yeah. See, my car is tiny. You can't really do too much with that. Yeah. No is it, a, is it a two-door, four-door? It's a four-door. It's just, it's a um, hatchback trunk. I like hatchbacks. I know, I do, too. 
All right, Paul. So tell us not the news news with Paul. All right. Now, this is kind of freaking me out. What, have you been to Florida recently? Mm, no. Can't say how. Are you going to Florida anytime soon? Uh, if it's still there in the next five years, maybe. In the next five years. Okay. Not recently. That's good because apparently, I don't know if you've seen this going around, they're having these weird rashes of flesh-eating bacteria. You know what? Down scratch, there. Scratch that. Maybe I'm not going to Florida in the next five Literally years. Literally, people are just like not even going in the water. They're just really? walking on the beach. And there's like, there's some... You remember the, last summer... There was that red algae bloom. Do you remember that? Oh my gosh, yes. And it killed a lot. Toledo. Of the... Toledo couldn't have, they couldn't drink in Toledo, right? That's a, di- that's a different algae bloom. Oh lord, there's so many algae yeah, blooms. Yeah, up here is the green algae bloom. Oh my gosh. Still going on, by the way. Yeah. But down there, they had the red algae bloom. So much as you could like see it from space. Mm-hmm. And it was killing all the marine life and everything. It eventually went away. But apparently, I don't know if something, plus it's also just still Florida. Mm-hmm. People are getting like this weird ass flesh eating bacteria that literally you're let you wake up and your legs just gone. Like I have to cut it off basically. Like oh people my are like God. they go into the doctor. You're like I got their thrash on my leg. They put you under. You wake up and your legs gone. Like, w- <laughs> like how do you even get it? Like I don't know. Just through a cut, through a scratch, Jesus. through. Doesn't that scare you? It really. I mean, it's I mean, kind it, of a a scary movie, but like you're living it. I mean, it, it... Like, how do you live a normal life? Because at any point in Florida, there's a freaking flash eating, flash eating, flash eating. Flash eating no, that's why you don't live in Florida. Well, yeah, that's true, too. You just build the wall around that. I'm not going to lie. This is definitely the earth getting back at us for all that we've done. What is it? Do we have, like, 12 years left or no, something like that? We don't have too long. Do you see the pictures of Greenland? They release pictures of Greenland, and it's like... There's well, no ice in Greenland. Well... I mean, is that uh, Greenland's not as uh, is it's not as glaciery as everyone no, thought? No, Greenland thought. is the glacier. Iceland is the one. That but I thought Greenland wasn't that glaciery no, either. Oh, Greenland's a big old block of ice. Not anymore. <laughs> well, yeah, now it's a chain of islands. Now they're like form microwaving. The, form the outline, of and now the Amazon's be. burning too. I know. And here's the thing: How did the Amazon burn for two weeks? And like. Well, most of us were unaware. Well, a lot of it was deforestation from Brazil, and and well that, but then also they're refusing any foreign aid. They're like, no, we they want. They're... Well, they they did that on purpose. I mean, the burnings for the logging companies and the oil companies. Brazilian's president was all into that. I don't know. This is ridiculous. That's why it finally has been put out, quote unquote. I know, but see, and this is what's funny is we were like. You know, if we don't take care of the earth, the earth won't be here. No, no, bitch. We won't be here. <laughs> the earth ain't going nowhere. That's why I'm worried about, like, having kids and stuff. It's like, what in God's name are they going to have? By the way, did you... It was last week, and this is the shit that scares me. Seriously. Mm-hmm. Because apparently there was a meteor the size of, like... <gasps> that just missed like, us. Tech, yes. That, like, basically gave us a buzz cut that we had no freaking idea was coming. They're just like, whoops, missed that one. Like, is that not or is that not? Like, tell me, like, that's the earth being like, see what I can do. See what I can do to you. Well, there's also. Because the earth be fine. There's also. There's an asteroid. um, About It's about 10 years away from us. And it's the size of the Empire State Building. Oh, Lord. And it's going to get real close to us. Like, even closer than that one was. Mm -hmm. And their scientists were like, yeah, we'll probably be okay. I'm like, I don't like probably. (laughs) Which brings me to this question because. This is something I brought up to my friends the other week. We had this really cool discussion about it. Mm-hmm. If okay, so say this asteroid, it was going to destroy the Earth yeah. and everything. I'm not. I don't want to go into these weird scientific theories about what we can do or anything. We'll just shoot missiles into the sky and blow yeah. it up before it even gets cl- anywhere say, near us, say we, right? Wouldn't that be the tactic? Nuke it. Well, this sounds like that a bad sounds idea. like nuke the hurricane, which is stupid. But like, you can you nuke know an I mean? asteroid, like send, maybe. Like send up missiles to like launch. Like maybe it takes a few years for them to get to where the asteroid is now. But this this is this is right. This is my this isn't my scenario. Okay. Okay. In this scenario, we can't do any of that. All right. That's just suspend reality. That's not possible. None of that. And in ten years, this asteroid will hit the Earth and Mm -hmm. will blow up the Earth. Okay. We cannot stop it. Okay. What do you think happens tomorrow? If we were to find out this information, we're to find this out. Oh, bedlam. You think so? Absolutely, because. Especially, I think right now we're going through a huge period. This is the sociologist in me. It's like sociology with Matt time. Do you think? I think, you we're, think... In a, we're in a huge period of like <clears throat> individuality, and like the individual is more important than like the common good, and like this stress on me, 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 me. Yeah. And I think something like that. This idea of like, okay, in ten years we're all gonna die, so 
live up while you can, me, me, me. I think like it'd be a laissez-faire situation. Absolutely. It'd be Bedlam. It'd be The Purge. Except for 10 years. It would be that. It's 10 years though. Yeah, because if people... Here's the thing. What kind of keeps us... It would us be motiv- Bedlam immediately? Us, well, yeah, because what keeps us motivated? Money. Money or the... Well, I guess what keeps us in line? It's this idea we want to live for a long time, most of us. Yeah. You know, we, we all like, okay, we want to live. We, we want life. We want to be comfortable. We want to be successful. Well... Truth is, we're all going to die in 10 years. The comfort's come through out the window. Who cares about success when we all know we're going to die in 10 years? At that point, it's like, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to murder so-and-so? Do you want to do these terrible things to people? Do you want to, you know... What what would you do? I think I would go right. You'd go right what? Just, I love writing. And I think, you know, with my career being so... You know, I work in very you know, aggressive industries and that's not a, you know, the hashtag spoiler alert or anything. That's, you know, just what it is. And, um, there's a lot of things I want to do that I just kind of can't do. Like, I'd love to go on like a mission trip to Japan for a few months and teach English, but like I work in the wrong industry. I can't, like if I were to leave the industry I'm in, it'd be so hard to get back into that. So, you know, there's just, cer- there's certain pleasures and certain, so you would just sit back and write. I would probably go to the middle but of the But no one's going to read that. Yeah. But it's for me. Years. For me. I don't know what I would do, honestly. If I found that out, I go in. Middle this of reminds me. I'd go into solitude. Absolutely. You remember? Have you ever seen that movie? It's, I think it's seriously underrated. Finding a friend for the end of the world. No. Steve Carell. I don't know that movie. It's basically this premise um, that uh, an asteroid's going to destroy Earth, and okay. it's kind of like a romantic slash sad comedy. Yeah. And it's with Steve Carell, which is an odd casting for this movie, but it's two weeks mm-hmm. instead of ten years. It's two weeks. See, two weeks. Immediate bedlam. Absolutely. With that, yes. I, if it was two weeks, I'd be like, oh, okay, every Ten years, they might be able to hold I th- on. I, I don't think, to be totally fair and frank, I don't think much would change in the first year or two. I think governments would try to keep things under control for the most part. Well, the, if we're going by a situation where there's nothing we can do, then I think it'd be episode bedlam. But I think maybe if there's like this situation where like, well, we, maybe we can do something, then yeah, they're going to try, because they're going to devote all their time and energy to doing y- something. You have to realize there's going to be factions of people too. There's going to be factions of people who just think this isn't true. True. And be like, that's eh, not happening. Or it's like a religious Right. There's going to be the religious people who think, well, they might actually be in the first group that this is not true because technically religious people think. No, it'll be, um, I think a lot of it will be like, you know, this is God telling them that like, we is a, human like that humans are terrible like right. i got them in some more situation there will be those people who blame themselves as a society like those kind of people who think like it was our fault this is gonna happen <laughs> yeah and then there are those gonna go people will be like f this we're gonna fight it even though we know it's not possible yeah. like and then there'd be a group like me it's like well you know i there's been things i've been wanting to do for years that i'm gonna do or I, there's that group's small. gonna be small yeah and i honestly don't think you would do that i honestly what did you think i would do panic I mean, yeah. Who's not going to panic? Everyone's going to panic. Yeah, but I don't know if you would... Do you really think you would do that, though? Just hide in the woods and write? I think so. Or would you be well, crapping your pants one. for the next ten years? Of course. Who wouldn't be crapping their pants? It's like everyone knows now you have a death date. Everyone I'm, has a death date. I'm trying to think about what I would do, and I, I don't know. I you, honestly you wouldn't, don't. You'd probably take Katie somewhere safe, because it's going to be Bedlam. But safe where? Where are you going to be safe? I don't know. In the middle of Parma Heights? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. It's all like... Let's see, here. Let's do this. <clears throat> let's do this. This will be fun. This is interesting. We'll have some homework to do. Okay. Ask a couple of your, your friends that and what they would do. Okay. We're going to do a study. I'll ask a couple of mine. Okay. Next podcast will come and right. we'll display the answers. Perfect. What, what and you know, if you're listening and you want to contribute, you can tweet at us at Chops Radio. Mm-hmm. That's your handle. Correct. And then mine's uh, Reapstar, H-R-I-B-A-S-T-R. If you're like, listen, I have to let them know what I think. Um, we'd love to hear it. So next episode, next let's episode. Come, come together. And see we'll you. do a focus group. All right. Sounds good. All right. You got any advice for us? Yes. Dead advice with me, Matt. <clears throat> After going from this deep, Woo. we went from such a deep <clears throat> philosophical conversation to such shallow advice. I love it. That's fine. Um, so this one, the title is debating over having kids is stalling us. Let's take a listen. So it says before my husband and I married, we discussed kids and that he admitted he never really wanted to have kids. He'd be fine with having a kid with me. But now, like, he puts it off. And it's gotten to a point that she's 34, he's 40, and she's like, it's a, it's a limited window. Um, 
and he he believes that if we have a kid, like our lives will end because we hear a lot from our friends like that. It's like all the complaining and all the work that goes into having a kid. Um, what can I do with my husband? And so Carolyn, and I love a nice Carolyn Hacks because Carolyn is not going to deal with your bullshit. Carolyn does not have the time to sugarcoat. Carolyn is here with the blade of reason. And she goes, you need to demand that he either honors the promise and if, because he made that promise to you that yes, we would have a kid. And if he goes back, then he lied to you and that, that narrows your options. <clears throat> And she also said, and I agree with this, she says, you said your window is somewhat limited. It's not limited. It's running out. And I agree. I mean, pregnancy is difficult no matter how old you are, mm-hmm. but it's common fact. And, you know, I'm not a doctor, but like, you know, she's 34. I mean, in 10 years, it's going to be very hard, if not maybe over. Like she's going to, if she wants to have a baby, like a biological, like biological birth. Yeah. Obviously you can always adopt and foster and you can always be a mother and father or... Any kind of parental figure. Correct. But, um, and so she's like, so you need to get on it. What, what a wimp, dude. That guy. Why would you make a promise like that and then bail on it? You're just a piece of trash at that point, honestly. Because that's a big thing. I just feel like it's, <clears> such, a, a big it's thing. such a selfish move to be like, yeah, I totally agree. Or like, I promise, like, you know, and then you're pushing and you're pushing and you're pushing. And it's like, like, so you clearly, it's weird because, you know, he's going to be like, well, I loved you and I loved you so much that I didn't want to lose you. But then I also didn't love you enough to respect no, the promise a, that I No, he's, he's just a piece of trash. If he yeah. can't keep it... Because that's a big... If it was a smaller promise, like... <laughs> I don't know. We'll move to Paris or something. Yeah. Whatever like that. That's... I, it doesn't seem small. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's like, oh, shoot. Um, no, I know what you mean. But There's it's, like levels of it's like Yeah, it's like, well, that's annoying. You know, whatever. But it's like, kids is a huge thing. But we know... I mean, we know plenty of people who relationships have ended because... You know, one person wants kids, one person doesn't. And rightfully so. You and need I to be agree. the person. I you, agree. I will, I never, you will resent the other person. I never have issues with someone who, who leaves someone's kids and said we couldn't grant kids. That, it's a, that it's is, a shame. That is a fundamental it, thing. It sucks. It's, it's not like, oh, goody. But it, it's, it needs it's to happen. It's a fundamental thing. Absolutely. That and money are two huge fundamental things to... To but if, if you're like, okay, well, I guess we can have one, you know, I'm not really into it, but like, because I know you want that and you're balking, you're balking, you're balking. It's like, just dude. be up front. Just be up front. Be like, I don't know. I don't, I, I just don't. So what would you do if you're in her position? Like, would you, you'd, I mean, you'd confront him, I feel like at this point. But do you, if he says, okay, I lied, would you just be like, okay, divorce we'll divorce? Yeah, that'd be it. Or would you, I don't know. Would you try and salvage that? No. Or? No, I wouldn't. Yeah. Honestly, it's not because yes, I know she's she can still adopt and have kids that way too. Yeah. It all depends on two. Well, it's a lot of other factors, monetary factors, and yeah. things like that. But I mean, it's and she says that they're financially okay. I forgot to mention then, that. Then, 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 like, say goodbye. It's she's like it's you know it's not like we're unable to financially support a kid. Then, it's, but you know he's she's like he hears the stories and it's like well. But that's the thing. Everyone complains. Well, I should say, go, you, you got to get some serious Human therapy. Human nature first, is but. complaining. Like, I mean, I'll be, I'll be the first to admit, I'm guilty of complaining. We mm-hmm. all complain. And it's easy, I can see, when a parent, you know, your kid's kind of like your primary responsibility. Right. In a way. Right. So, yeah, of course you're going to complain about your main responsibility. Like, oh, Sandy didn't do the dishes. Or like, you know, Joey threw up all over the kitchen floor and it's a silk floor. And it's, I, I don't silk know. Silk floor. You know what I mean. Like, Bamboo. <laughs> None of the bamboo. Jesus. <laughs> so I, I get why these parents are complaining to them, like, oh yeah, you know, my kid is doing this, but kids are kids are brats. Kids are annoying as hell. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> we gotta have them. It's like, well, we can't have robots. And you know what? That's five percent of having a kid. The annoying part of having a kid. I agree. My wife is annoying. She can be annoying. <laughs> Everyone's annoying. I'm annoying. <laughs> Katie's listening to this right now in the car, like, what? <laughs> what did he say about me? Well, everybody's annoying. You're annoying. I'm I agree. annoying. We all complain about everything. So it's like, you can't let the complaints about the kids be like, oh my gosh, listen to what they say. You know? <laughs> I feel like you're going to enjoy this next one. This is from my favorite website, askamanager.org, where I get all I my like professional tips. So the topic is, I don't want to fist bump my coworker multiple times a day. So she says, Fergus is my peer. We have the same title. We work in the same department and we're very mobile. We move around the office a lot. My issue is that Fergus, a couple times a day or so, will come over and then offer a fist bump or a high five during his interactions. He does with everyone. There's no rhyme or reason. And she's like, I don't want to be a stick in the mud, but 
I don't want to have any physical contact with my coworkers beyond the occasional necessary handshake because social conventions make me feel obligated to return the gesture, but like I'm not, I'm just not a fan of doing it. And I don't want to sound like a complete jerk, but how do I get out of this? And of course, my girl, Ask a Manager, she knows what she's talking about. She's like, listen, you can opt out, you know, just be honest. Be like, you know, I'm not really a fist bumper or I'm not a big high fiver. But then you follow up with something that like brings it kind of positive. Like, you know, like I'm not a high bumper, but like, oh, I'm out to lunch, have a good lunch. Or like, you know, I'm not a fist bumper, but I'm excited that we got this project done or that like this is settled, that kind of thing. Um, and it's, she said it's a great way to approach Unwanted Hugs, too. But um, Unwanted Hugs, that's a great band. Unwanted Hugs. With their, fir- <laughs> with their first single, like, <laughs> Fist Bump. <laughs> and, um, you know, she said, and I think that's a smart, it's a, it's a good idea. Because, you know, like, when you run in the pair and, and they're, like, awkward about it, and you feel awkward, and then it's just awkward. Yeah. Like, and I totally respect people's boundaries of, like, I don't want a fist bump. I don't want a hug. Whereas, like, I'm not. I'm very physical. I'm like, oh, mama me, I come in for a spicy hug. <laughs> you know, that's just me. But I get that's on everyone. But it is awkward when someone's like, oh, do not. It's also that. really horrible and awkward to be like, yo, can cannot do this. Yeah. So, like, I love the idea of, like, turning it into, like, oh, I'm not a fan of a hug. But, yes, I'm so excited, too. Like, it brings it back. This whole thing's just awkward. It's uncomfortable. I don't know what I would do. But what, I, if you were working with someone who fist bumped you a couple times a day, I, I I'd probably just go with it. Honestly. I don't think I would be that concerned. But I could well, get that's why. Us. That's but us. That's too. us, yeah. But I could get why. I mean, like, what's your equivalent of a fist bump in the office? What do you mean? Like, what's your work tick? Like, what's something that a coworker would do a couple times a day that's, like, small? That I don't like? Yeah. Oh, uh, let me try to think here. Um,. I know, this is a tough one. I don't I, like small talk. Like, how's the weather, Paul? Like, I, if you don't... W- one of the things that bugged me the most is... And with my last job, you all understand. You were in that position, you understand. Mm-hmm. When people of, of, of a sales department will come mm-hmm. and just sit next to you. <laughs> and watch what's going on. Yeah. You ever Actually, had that happen? Hover, I, I don't like hovering. 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 I'll say that. Hovering is one of the worst. Yeah. And sometimes I feel like I'm guilty of that and I try and be aware because like I got, you know, I'm always running around. If I have to wait for someone, like say I have to, someone's on the phone, I, to, I leave. I go to a different room. Yeah. And every once in a while I'll bop back. I try to do it sparingly, mm. but like I'll go to the kitchen or go yeah. down to an office or whatever because I know hovering's the worst. So then you just be like, um, please don't hover, but I'm so excited we got this job done. Yay. Get out of my face. <laughs> now, are you ready for this one? This one's juicy. This is a dear Abby. And you know how I feel about Abby. Abby's a little hit and miss. Because sometimes... Yeah. Remember the one? What was the one that Abby... Like, I don't know what it was. But basically, someone was like, Abby, my kid's doing crack. And Abby was like, well, like, what kind of crack? Like, it was... Oh, like, yeah. It, was, it wasn't that, but like, it was like... It was like, like very was like, what? Yeah. Abby? Like, what? Okay, so this, this is the topic. He wants to be, quote, just friends, but asks for kisses and books us a hotel room. What gives? I know, right? Three months ago, I went on three dates with Kevin. Kevin sent me a text saying he didn't feel I could offer him the relationship that he was looking for. But Kevin wants to remain friends because he has, quote, fun with me. I agreed, and we've gotten together many times and communicate often. I'm not physically attracted to Kevin, but I sense he's attracted to me, and it makes me uncomfortable. Since Kevin agreed to be friends, he's invited me over for movie and cuddle night, put his arm around me, asked to kiss me, and booked a hotel room with only one bed and no sofa. It's like I'm his placeholder until he finds a real girlfriend, and he wants to spend time with me out of boredom and loneliness. I don't know how to break things off nicely. And she signed her name Not Interested in the West, which sounds like a really bad, like, romance novel. What's the West? Like, Not Interested in the West. Like, she's, she's probably on the West Coast, but, like, Not Interested in the West. Oh, okay. By Daniel Steele. <laughs> Are you ready for Abby's This is a pops? mess. This, this is, is a mess. Well, here's, just, like, No, I no, before what, you get into, I want to oh, hear the response first, okay, before, well, before. I just, I just love how, like, some people, like, write back these long things. Abby just got to the point on this one. Abby was like, I'm a big pen. She just, I got to the point. <laughs> Abby, I think you have Kevin pegged correctly, and here's how to distance yourself, Damn. quote, nicely. Tell him you like him very much, but as a platonic friend only, and explain that kissing, cuddling, and sharing the bed are things you do with a boyfriend, and it's time for both of you to move on, and then move on. But why on. would he do that without making it... Here's, are you ready for what, here's what I'm reading between the lines. I don't understand. I'm reading between the lines right now. Kevin wants a friends with benefits situation. 
And she's like, not into cuddling. But that's not really a friends with benefits situation. Cuddling on the couch or movie night? and places. Friends with benefits is, at least what I would think, is sex only. Well, cuddling in movies and stuff. I don't think so. Yeah, because you're being friendly. A friends with benefit is one of those people I believe you just text. Just for a... Well, I... To right? Me, to me, there's layers to it. It can be as easy I've as... I've never had one, so well, I don't That's more of a booty call. A booty call is like 2 a.m. like, what you doing? Like, a friends with benefits... Is there a difference between a friends with benefits and a booty call? Yeah, a booty call you don't respect. I would say, right? <laughs> you don't respect... You don't respect the booty call. And you don't respect yourself for reaching out to the booty call. But it's like, you're desperate. Do you, you have anybody in your phone that you have for the booty call? No, no, no. No, you're oh lying. Gosh. You looked away when you said that. Well, I itched my shoulder. <laughs> you're, like, <laughs> you're like, no, I don't. Well, here's my thing. I love consistency. So, like, the idea of just, like, someone who I wouldn't use consistently goes against kind of, like, my nature. Okay. Like, I, I love building up long and good friendships. I love, you know, consistent work and projects and, like, evolutions. So, like, this idea of, like, once in a while hitting up someone, like, that's not my cup of tea. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I'm getting, from this letter from Not Interested in the West... This Kevin wants a friend with benefits and she doesn't. And it's as easy as being like, sorry, I don't want that. I just want a boyfriend. And walk away. Don't be friends with him. Do you I not have what... friends? Like, is she, is this the only friend in the West? Like, why does she, just... she care that much? If she's not, so if, weird. If you're not interested that's, in anything I don't feel he has like to that's... offer, move on. I just feel like that's not a friends with benefit. I don't know what it is. To, it's a booty. Well, he's trying to make it a friends with benefits because he's like, oh, come over and watch a movie and then like, we'll cuddle. But if he's doing this all the time, I don't know. I don't know. I'm lost. That's the thing. I feel like it's consistent. Maybe he's just afraid of the commitment. Well, he says, what did he say? He said, um, I didn't, he didn't feel I could offer him the relationship he's looking for. Which is like code word for like, I like you, but I don't like you enough to be in a relationship with you. I mean, am I wrong? I think he just doesn't want to commit. Maybe. Maybe. Well, that's the advice for today. <laughs> Any closing thoughts on our reunion special? Oh, not reunion. No, let us know what you think about uh, what we said earlier. Yeah, if you, uh, it's the meteor. If you, if it was e- the Earth was ending in ten years, in and you knew years. about what would you do? What would you do? And How what would you, you think you would do? Two part thing. What would you do? And what do you th- what do you think the Earth? Would because do? we all know, like when we, you know when you're in like ethics class, I'm like, would you steal the bread for your dying family? And we're all like, like absolutely. Yeah. But then like in reality, half of us would be like, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't steal the bread. Chops Radio for me and Reapstar H R I B S T A R. Twitter. Let us know what you think and we'll see you next time. Till then, peace out.